Our passion is to keep the snakes alive. Hi everyone, this is Subisha and today we are meeting uh, Nat Geo Snake City's top couple, uh, Simon and Suzy. Uh, hi Simon and Suzy. Hi. hi. So uh, you are shooting uh, your latest season, eighth season in India right now. So how is it shooting in India? What, what was your experience like? Well, India has is, uh, is been amazing so far. Very fascinating country. People are overwhelmingly nice, which is fantastic and lots of snakes. Very colorful country, lots of beautiful colors everywhere, which as you can tell, Simon and I like color. <laughs> We're very colorful ourselves. <laughs> so why Mysore specifically? Like, uh, is it a like snakes hub or something like that? To be honest, yeah, there is lots of snakes here. And obviously it's a very busy area, lots of activity going on. And you've got nice wildlife pockets as well. So there, there is forest here. There is open areas where animals live. So it kind of works well. Plus uh, Mysore has snake catchers, which help us obviously uh, when we go out on call outs to rescue the animals. So Mysore is pretty good for everything really, for yeah. nature wise, especially snakes and reptiles. And you've got a great variety of snakes. We wanted to try to cover a lot of your species and uh, here is an excellent place to do that. So uh, have you been to India before? No, no first time. So did you see any unique type of snakes here that well, yeah. you haven't seen in countries before? Um, yes, we have. I mean, obviously we're aware of the more common ones like your spectacle cobra, your Russell's viper, things like that, um, which we don't get in Africa when we're filming over there. So yeah, we have encountered some new species. We can't um, give too much away because obviously this is for a later season, mm. um, but we're definitely dealing with some nice different snakes as well. So we, yeah, we're very fortunate. Uh, so what was your most challenging rescue in India? Your um, most challenging? I have to say storylines at the moment. Um, so we have to be careful with um, talking about season nine because we can't reveal all of the storylines. And also at the moment, we don't know what's going to make the show. We're currently filming and not all of the captures make the show. So I could tell you about something really exciting. And then if it doesn't make the show, people are going to say, hey, where was that capture? So um, to be honest, I, I don't know which ones will make it, but I think most of our captures have been exciting. Um, you know, snakes end up in very crazy places like they do in South Africa. They do the same here. Snakes think the same way. Um, you know, but for, for you guys, um, you know, basically you've got season eight going to be aired soon. So that's obviously based in South Africa at the moment. And um, that will be aired on the 18th of July and on the Nat Geo Wild channel. So you'll see also some of the locations and crazy places where snakes end up. And to be honest, it's pretty much the same here. They end up, like I say, in very strange places. So um, you'll see the same in India as they have been in South Africa. The most challenging rescue or encounter with snakes that you guys have had? Oh, we've, we've had lots, I'll be honest. Snakes never seem to be straightforward. <laughs> uh, we have had lots. We had one in a tunnel, which I think lots of people remember that. That was season two, I believe. That was down in a, a deep tunnel. Um, challenging, I mean, pretty much most of the time they can be challenging. They end up in places we have to smash kitchens down. Um, they can be in an attic in a rooftop, which is very hot to work in. Temperatures in South Africa are very similar to India. So when you're in, in somebody's roof in somebody's attic, you know, the temperatures are so, so hot. So trying to capture something in a hot roof is very dangerous, not only for the snake, but for us passing out with the heat. Yeah. And other captures? Uh, we often get mambas in ceilings. They can be in car engines, uh, in trucks, often going to trucks. Nice place to hide, warm, out the way of people until the driver gets in and gets a fright. Um, so yeah, we get some crazy calls. And, and the problem with that, we know if we have seen the snake and we 100% know it's there, we can't leave without it. This is why our job is very difficult because we can't leave it there. We can't leave it in somebody's home or somebody's truck because obviously the snakes could get killed or the person, if this is a dangerous snake, the person could also get bitten. So we have to remove it. So whatever the, whatever the snake ends up, that's something we have to deal with. We have to remove it, whatever it takes. Uh, and sometimes it really can be whatever it takes, you know? Um, and they also end up in schools uh, with children. So having a, a venomous snake in a school is not ideal as we all know. So, um, you know, that's something we have to deal with as well. So it's just, snakes end up in crazy places. 
But we like to stress, we don't have a snake problem. This is something we really like to get across to people. It's not a snake problem we have. Um, it's just basically we've built our houses, our homes, our businesses on top of the land where snakes are. So it's not them being mean or trying to enter into a human habitat. We basically built our homes on there. So we just rescue snakes, remove snakes, um, but we never say they're a problem. That's actually very interesting uh, thing that you guys are doing. Like, I mean, normal people look at snakes and they go like, uh, and they try to either kill it <laughs> or I don't know, they just run, try to run away or do harm it or something like that. And that ends up very badly. So what you guys are doing right now, it's it's very, I might say brave, if I'm not wrong. Stupid, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think education is key. And the reason people fear snakes and lots of other things is just the unknown or not understanding the animal or the situation. Yeah. So for us, through the show, through the power of the show, we've got this wonderful platform to educate. And it has changed attitudes around the world. We know that for a fact. Um, we get lots of fan mail. And, you know, fans have said in the past that, you know, old me, before I watched a show, would normally maybe kill the snake or, you know. But now, because of the show, we have learned that it's not going to chase us. It's not going to try and run after us and bite us or anything like that. If we leave it alone, the snake may slither off. Or we know there's the... Um, people out there to like snake catchers to help them so you know it's we're very lucky to have this platform to educate we have found a difference though with what you're saying right now is how people here seem well do respect snakes it's actually a really refreshing lovely attitude that we've encountered here that i mean even in um some of the beliefs as well the the religious beliefs um people that some of the um figures we've seen have got cobras on them you know this is wonderful to see that snakes are being worshipped mm. how lovely is that we've definitely come to the right country yeah i think in <laughs> india definitely has a better understanding and they kind of like used to having snakes around or they know there's snakes around and if they see a snake they just phone a snake catcher they don't even go near it they just watch it which is great you know we turn up they know exactly where the snake is or pretty pretty close to it and we go in and find the snake and take it away and i think that's really great because they they respect the snake they know they need the snakes uh, because obviously they eat the mice and the rats, which spread diseases, and they eat our crops, you know. A lot of crops go to waste because of rodents. So when we chat to people here, they're like, no, we don't want to hurt you or anything like that. We just want it to go somewhere else. So it's really good. Yeah, they do worship snakes here. They are like uh, kind of a god to you. Yeah. So which is that's a different aspect. No, it's lovely. It's yeah. nice to, to hear this. So, um, and as Simon said, it has definitely changed well, it does seem to have changed people's attitudes, how they are with the snakes, a lot of respect, which is lovely. So how did you guys first start with this docu-series? Like, uh, how did you come across it? How were you approached? Like, when were you approached? Okay, good question. Uh, I emigrated to South Africa in 2005. Um, and when I arrived in South Africa, I wasn't sure what to do for a job, but I'd always kept snakes as a child. And I had quite a lot of knowledge. So I started uh, rescuing snakes that ended up in people's houses and gardens. And I did that as a job for, for about seven years. And um, whilst I was doing that as a job, our production company, Earth Touch, found out about myself. And at the time, it was my ex-wife um, rescuing animals, mostly snakes. And um, they asked, could we do a little promo video, video of you guys catching the snakes and releasing them back in the wild? So I said, yeah, no problem. Didn't think anything of it. So they did a little video. Um, one day we rescued a spitting cobra and someone had chopped its tail off. So we took it to the vet and we fixed it. It was fine. The snake was okay and we could put it back into the, into the wild. And a um, couple of years later, we got season one. It just kind of went to National Geographic, Nat Geo Wild, and they accepted season one and it's just grown bigger and bigger since then. So I wasn't looking to do that, it just happened. Uh, and over the years, Myself and Susie, we've rescued hundreds of snakes. The last time I counted was over 2,500. That was a long time ago, so I don't even know what it is now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it came around. And I think with my expertise on snakes and Susie being a herpetologist, um, it's just got the show more, more and more popular. You know, not just children watch it, watch it adults watch it. It's got quite a wide range of viewership, which is fantastic. And, and it's interesting, people yeah. snake fears <laughs> seem to watch i get a lot of people that i hear about the phobias of snakes 
um, also watch it, but it's they, they have a fascination with it. And we have, I know, again, through fan mail, cured lots of phobias, which is great as well, snake phobias. So what were your first interactions with snakes? Like, like first memory you have, how did you start catching snakes? Uh, probably about 12 years old, 13 years old. I was living in the UK, that's where I'm originally from. And I used to go out with friends into the fields and we used to catch frogs and toads and newts and fish. And I'd take them home and keep them in tanks. I was allowed to do that. And then one day I caught a grass snake and I took that home. And my mum and dad said, take that snake straight back and put it back in the field. They, they were scared of snakes. I wasn't allowed to keep snakes. I could keep anything else. And um, after a lot of persistence and me talking to my mum and dad, they let me have one snake, which is a harmless corn snake from North America. And within a matter of months, I had boas, pythons, and then a year later, it was venomous snakes. I basically taught myself how to work with snakes and how to understand them. And um, I never read books or anything like that as a child. I wasn't really interested in reading, but I started reading books on snakes and reptiles, and I kind of absorbed it. Where normally with me, if I read a book, I'd have to read it 10 times to try and get it all in my head. But reptiles seem to be a fascination for me. And I just got more and more interested. So from an early age, I've always kept snakes, pretty much from the age of sort of 15, really. And um, yeah, knowledge just grew. And I started breeding snakes, importing snakes, things like that. And then, like I say, in 2005, went to South Africa and then started rescuing them as a job. And now we're on international TV, doing the same thing, but on a bigger scale. How about you, Susie? Same story. Yeah, similar story. I've always loved animals. At seven years old, I became a vegetarian because I loved animals. And it's always, always been with me. I studied anything on animals, read uh, programs, funny enough, used to watch National Geographic uh, and also used to get the publications because of the coverage on animals they had as well. So, um, you know, just absolutely had a huge passion, but I kind of veered toward, towards the misunderstood. Animals that had a bad reputation, I felt sorry for them. So I wanted to sort of portray them in a positive way, get rid of that negative stigma and show them in a really positive way. So sort of anything sort of strange and misunderstood, probably why I started dating Simon as well. <laughs> so they <laughs> misunderstood and strange. <laughs> but um, basically I wanted to sort of show other animals in a, in a positive way and hopefully change attitudes. And that's something I have achieved or we have achieved, which I think is just you know, amazing. Again, thanks to Nat Geo Wild having that platform to do so. How did you guys actually meet? Did you meet on the, on the series by filming? No. Or we met prior Friends. to that. Funny enough, we both kept venomous snakes in England in the United Kingdom. Uh, and it's quite a small group of people that do that. It's not everyone's uh, kind of ideal pet. So we had them as, as, as pets, so to speak. And it's just through the reptiles that we met because it's like I say, a very small world. So yeah, through, through reptiles, through snakes. Mm. Uh, have you guys been written before? Yeah, both have, yeah. once uh, by a North American copperhead viper. Sure. So in 2007, that was a bit on my finger index finger yeah it was just very painful two weeks of being sick arms swelled up huge there was no anti-venom available so i just put up with it I ended up at the doctors in the end because the pain is very intense it's like putting your arm into boiling water or fire uh, and you can't sleep i didn't sleep for like four days four nights um very very ill kept being sick so it's not nice um it, it can kind of do one of two things either you'll stop working with snakes or you'll be more careful. So I chose to try and be more careful. But I mean, when you work with snakes every day, unfortunately, at some time or other, you probably are going to get bitten. It's inevitable. But touch wood, since then, there's been no more accidents. We have some close encounters every day uh, because we're working with them. And they're wild snakes as well, you know. So we just take our time, try and be careful. Um, and yeah. We must it. point out, obviously, the animal, the snake, doesn't know we're rescuing it. And it's obviously scared that you know they don't know if we want to hurt it or not so it's just purely defending itself so when you know bites do occur it's purely because it's a natural behavior for for a snake for any animal a dog anything to defend themselves so it's not because snakes are mean in any way no, it's purely defending defend themselves. themselves okay so how do you like after you catch a snake after you rescue it what do you do after that what's the procedure okay in south africa 
Um, there is, you know, basically we want to move, remove the snake away from human dwellings so the encounter doesn't happen again. So we've got some wonderful um, places that we can release them that are sort of dense forest away from humans. Between nature reserves. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so, but don't they um, again come back in the city? Like, don't they find their way back? No, generally not. Uh, we take them far enough that it was just, they, we put them in such ideal places where there's food available. So let's just say we've caught a, a snake that feeds on frogs or toads. We'll put that snake in an area where there's water. So it could be a river, a pond, a lake, uh, where there's an abundance of food and lots of places where that snake would naturally occur. So we'll put it there. There's no reason for it to move somewhere else. When you put a snake somewhere that is not its environment and not the food source available, then it will look for that food source and then end up going somewhere where it shouldn't. So if it's something like a mamba, we'll drive two hours uh, into the countryside, into dense forest, but we know there's an abundance of food and we'll release the snake there. And, and we do yeah. make sure it's an area they're found in. It's not something we would just put them randomly somewhere. We know there would be other mambas there so they can mate and continue. So it's something, it's a lot of research that goes into it, uh, the demographics behind it, the you know the snakes themselves. So there's a lot of research. If you don't just drive and, and drop them off somewhere in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, again, as Simon said, it's to do with natural behavior, to do with their diet, releasing them as well can be daytime or nighttime, depending on their behavior, if they're a daytime diurnal snake or nocturnal. Um, so a lot of research does go into it but it's because we've been doing it for years in South Africa you know we know the ideal locations and we work with a big team who also help us. So Susie we have heard that you are kind of allergic to venom. Yes. <laughs> Don't you know. So, <laughs> how I, and why? I know it's um, I'm not in the ideal job because I do react so even something which we call mildly venomous people have no reaction to I guarantee my hand will be swollen up um, and I do react really badly. And the same with um, uh, the spitting cobra in South Africa that's featured in the show a lot. Uh, just walking in the room, I'll know one's been spitting in that room because straight away I can feel the effects of it. Um, so, you know, unfortunately it's one of those things. However, my passion is so much so about rescuing snakes and I do love them obviously that, you know, it hasn't stopped me. It's definitely changed my attitude. I'm definitely more cautious than I would have been in the past because, um, you know, something that may, you know, people have got time to go to the hospital to get anti-venom. I've got to be careful. I don't have that luxury, some, you know, in that situation. Um, so definitely I find I am stepping back a bit more as I'm getting older, I appreciate my life, <laughs> but I still have my passion for snakes and I don't want to change what I do. So um, yeah, I, I should rethink profession, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> That's actually very brave of you, I might say. Uh, uh, people question me, but like yeah. Brave or silly. Yeah. We always say somebody, it's like somebody allergic to peanuts working in a peanut factory. Probably <laughs> not the best choice of job, but uh, yeah, I won't change. I think you guys live in a house, if I'm not wrong, with over 80 snakes or something like that, with reptiles we, yeah, and a lot of it. animals. Like, yes. Our job is continuous. Whatever we do, it's our passion. So, you know, it's something people sometimes think we do it on screen, but it's something we do. It's a way of life. It's what we do. So even off screen, we are caring and looking after animals. How do you live with knowing the snakes in your... I mean, of course, you love snakes and it's a profession, but for the general people, like, don't you have this fear that snakes might come and just crawl right in your bed? Right. The, uh, when... The snakes that are kept are kept in a locked room. So even if they were to get out of their tanks that they're kept in, um, which are locked as well, they can't escape the room. Um, we have very strict rules in the United Kingdom on keeping of snakes, venomous snakes anyway. Um, so they can't escape. The, roof, the, the room that they're kept in is escape proof. So it's kind of like a jail for snakes, except they've got their own lovely environment. They've got heat, they've got water, they've got somewhere to hide, they've got food but they can't leave that area. And we can enter it, but they can't come out. And the other thing is, uh, because we have different animals, if, if everything was loose, 
we'd have probably one big fat animal at the end of it because it's a complete food chain. So everything is controlled, basically. So things are contained. Both Simon said they're in beautiful environments um, and just, just, just under control, basically. And then their rescues as well. Some people have kept them um, illegally in the UK. You have to have a license to have a venomous snake. The people might not have the right paperwork. Um, so rather than the animal being destroyed, we've taken them on. So again, it's just our, our rescue and passion that, you know, is just, that's what we do. Are they hard to maintain or uh, is it like a normal pet thing, like any other pet? No, well, venomous snakes are obviously very different to like your cat or your dog. Obviously that snake is dangerous. It needs to be respected and you need to know what you're doing. But in terms of looking after them, no, obviously there's different species that require say higher humidity or, you know, they're like lots of rainfall. So you have misting systems. Or you could keep something like a rattlesnake that lives in a desert and it can be bone dry. So it just, just depends on what yeah. snake's habitat at the time. But generally, no, snakes are pretty easy to look after uh, as long as you do your research. There are some that are quite hard, but there's lots of easy ones. So for a child that wants to keep a pet snake, we always recommend something like a corn snake or a house snake. Um, very easy to look after. And obviously they're harmless as well. The venomous stuff is only for experts. We must say that venomous snakes is not a normal snake to keep. Uh, there's lots of other choices you can do and keep, but do your research if you're going to keep a snake because there are uh, cer certain things you need to look into. Since your uh, work involves a lot of traveling around, like you go to different places, different countries. So what are the three places that uh, you would say are a wanderlust paradise? Um, oh, I don't know, everywhere. <laughs> Do you know, we are, I'm not just saying this, we are currently loving India, okay, in our travels, we are loving mm. India. Um, you know, the snake volume here is one, wonderful for us, um, but, you know, I know obviously there can be problems here. Um, I just like the experience of going to as many places as possible, but India is definitely, I'd like to come back here again, because India is so diverse, and it's such a big country. There's something like 270 species of snakes in India. We're only gonna scratch the surface on a few. So it'll be a pleasure to come back here again and maybe go to a different part of the country. We, you know, if you go further north, there's lots of types of pit vipers, uh, water snakes. There's, there's so many, so many snakes here. So yeah, fingers crossed, if we're lucky, we might be back again. Who knows? Yeah, hope so. But India would definitely stay one of the best countries in the world for reptiles. I think we have labelled this place Snake City. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What preparations do you do before you encounter uh, before you encounter with snakes? Um, I think, I mean, the thing, the word is for us, we always say if you don't want to have snakes in your home, um, we always say, you know, don't have litter, rubbish around the house. That will attract rodents. That, or, or you know, ultimately attract snakes. Avoid having things like big piles of wood or piles of tires or anything that a snake can live in. If people don't want a snake in their home, then obviously try to avoid things like that. Avoid trees, branches, touching the house. And um, there's some ways to do it quite easily as well to avoid snakes going in the house. And that's having screens up at doors. A lot of people obviously have, I mean, especially in this country, so hot and you know, lovely temperatures, and you'll probably want to have windows and doors open. Mosquito screens yeah. keep the snakes out. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so it's some measures. If you know there's lots of snakes around, keep your place clean and tidy, which is normal. And then put a mosquito screen against the door. That helps keep the snakes from coming into your home. Outside is a little bit different because they are meant to be outside. But we understand if it's a dangerous snake uh, and it's on your property, the best thing to do is call someone to take that snake away and put it somewhere more suitable. And that's what we do every day. We tell people the same thing. Okay. So you guys have amazing tattoos, if I see. I'm <laughs> Do you have any snake tattoo? I have. Yeah, yeah I've got yeah. one on my leg. There's a big snake that goes and wrapped around my leg down towards my foot. Yeah. Do you, Susie? I've got no snakes, actually. I don't really have, I, I'm more, actually, again, this is probably why I love India so much. The flowers here, the, the plants and the flowers I'm seeing are beautiful. So I concentrate on flowers and plants and, um, exactly what I'm seeing in India, but I have got some Mendy done here. Um, I couldn't resist it, so I actually went and had that done as well. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, like, you guys are very popular around here and everywhere else. Like, 
Snake City. Yeah, it's a very good show and a very interesting show to watch. So have you had any, any fan movements? So we've got lots of fans all around the world. Um, I think at the, the show is shown in 175 countries, I believe. And we get fan mail from all over the world, which is incredible. And I actually sort of love my world. You know, it's become such a, a nice world to have communications from everywhere. And uh, one year we did go out and meet and greet. And we did actually see lots of fans <laughs> as well. Um, so it's made it lovely. And I do personally try to reply to most of my fan mails, not everything. <laughs> and uh, it's just very time consuming. So, I, But I do try to always touch base. And I think the one of, one of the amazing things for us are people saying that we either inspired them, uh, we've changed their attitude towards snakes, which I think is lovely. They've actually become really positive about snakes. They love snakes. Um, and really strangely as well, because Simon and I look a bit different maybe with the tattoos and pink hair, um, you know, we've had people say their children are bullied because they're different um, for whatever reason. They may be an autistic child or they, they look slightly different or whatever. And we've actually heard from parents saying that the kids have responded saying, well, Simon and Sue look a bit different. It's actually cool to be different. So that's even lovely as well. Nothing to do with nature or the environment, but actually to help help a child in life, which is, you know, amazing too. Um, but I think it is wonderful. And, you know, for us to have this passion um, and to actually have this platform to, to talk to the world about it and educate people because we do need snakes this is one thing that we we do need to stress to people we do need uh, snakes as Simon mentioned earlier to keep the rat and mice population down is so important uh, because of the diseases they carry they carry ticks so when a snake eats a rat it's actually consuming the ticks as well um, so it's actually reducing disease that is spread from rodents to humans um, the crop damage that rats do is um, you know um, quite a lot actually. I think it's almost a third of crops yes, are damaged. About forty percent in some areas. Yeah. yeah, and because of that, then the price will go up in our fruit and veg. So snakes, weirdly, are keeping the cost of fruit and veg down. You know, mm -hmm. so that's quite a strange thing. Um, and also another thing, this is a big subject, I'm not going to go into it, but a lot, of, a lot of research is being done on snake venom and how it can actually help and cure some diseases. So snakes, weirdly, oddly enough, are saving lives through their venom. Um, Please don't go out and get bitten by a venomous snake because I've said that. There's actually, you know, a lot of things, uh, research that's got into that. Um, but we are talking, you know, curing types of cancer and all different things. So snakes are needed, that we need them on the planet. And if they were removed, there'd be a huge consequence. So snakes are actually incredible animals and we need them.